Uh, last week, I put out a video that talked about how California Growers Association, Humboldt did not actually have a chapter. It was not, the Humboldt chapter does not exist. Um, there are bylaws filed for CGA on the state level, of course, but there aren't any chapter paperwork filed. And though there was sort of a functioning chapter, it has been determined that there is no actual chapter. There are a few handful of growers that they do talk to but that's, uh, there's no official organization. There's been some confusion and I, you know, they are, st CGA Humboldt has its own Facebook page and they talk about it in their weekly policy meetings, but um, not with a lot of Humboldt representation. And uh, I reached out to Hezekiah Allen for comment on the existence or non-existence of this chapter. Uh, according to Facebook Messenger, he read the, my message but has not yet responded so if i do hear back from him i will uh, put it up next week and i know carrie reynolds from cannabis consciousness news was also going to be looking into it so you might check out uh, her site and i'll post a link for that the next thing i wanted to talk about was uh, a cool ad that uh, butte county farmers are running as an insert into the chico news interview the real face of cannabis farmers it's uh an insert, if you're familiar with Wonderland Nurseries inserts, it's a lot like that. It's in uh, it's an alt-weekly that's similar to the North Coast Journal, at least in uh, size and shape and production. So, uh, I really, this is, this is fabulous. This is exactly the kind of, you know, farmers I'm stoked that are coming out and making themselves known. So, you know, good job and thank you to, uh, that is from the Inland Cannabis Farmers Association, and uh, thanks to Crystal from True Humboldt for showing me uh, that ad. And the next thing I wanted to talk about was the Blacksburg uh, bust last week. There's been more information that came out, and to summarize, it sounds like, um, the, according to the reports from uh, Kim, the sheriff's office and the consultant and, uh, that I read on Kim Kemp's website, Black, uh, redheaded black belt. The person renting the property told the person they were renting it from that they had gotten the proper permits, but they had not actually registered until a helicopter flew over their site. And the sheriffs came, and I, uh, while they were registered, it did not uh, constitute a permit. And because they had told the landowner they had a permit, uh, the sheriff's office. Uh, decided that that was non-compliant and that the response to that should be to chop all the plants. So it sounds like there was a lot of miscommunication, uh, primarily between the leasee and the landowner. Uh, and, you know, maybe and may, it could be that the landowner misunderstood because the permitting process is fairly difficult, but miscommunication. Uh, and then the, lease, uh, the leasee and the sheriff had miscommunications. They one, you know, they were expecting to walk the sheriff through, but the sheriff, after asking them pointed questions, some of which the sheriff said they couldn't answer about where water was coming from and grading and other things. Uh, and then uh, the sheriff and the landowner was. Did the landowner want those plants to be cut if it wasn't permitted? I mean, maybe activity registration would have been sufficient for that landowner. I don't know what kind of conversations were had, so it's hard to say. But why, you know. We can agree that perhaps this wasn't the best scenario, but we can, you know, I think the point to discuss is chopping plants still the answer? Like, when does that stop becoming the answer? You know, and uh, the, the sheriff, in his statement that he released explaining the situation, which was very helpful, he said, discretionary judgment will prevail, uh, end quote, during this uh, sort of gray time between Per, uh, until permits are issued. So he also said that they walked away from several sites in the last few weeks as they recognized that people were either, you know, becoming or are compliant to some degree. I don't know, you know, it's hard, it's hard to say with after this Blocksburg thing what that means, but they apparently have discretion in that regard. So that is a thing. Uh, Hezekiah Allen from CGA, uh, popping up again in this story, released a letter to the editor um, at, 
among many things, thanked the sheriff for what had happened and how the response was, which I have mixed feelings about, but I can understand where he's coming from. But I think he had mixed feelings about it too. But I do find it curious that he, uh, that CGA and Hezekiah found it uh, prudent to comment on this situation, but did not comment until asked by the media about the uh, cultivation measure, tax measure, that's now headed towards the November ballot that the Humboldt County Board of Supervisors passed. CGA really released no official statement, but uh, did, uh, did respond to media inquiries regarding it. Uh, as I understand it, they were going to remain neutral, but uh, they were supportive of the tax measure because it was less than other places. But CGA is uh, definitely, on the state level, is definitely interested in getting belly scratches from legislators and what do you, you have to roll over to get some belly scratches. So there's that. Um, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, uh, you're, I'm interested in other folks' opinion on what CGA is doing. I'm obviously mostly in Sac uh, Humboldt County, so there's all sorts of stuff in Sacramento that I'm not directly privy to, but I'm privy to some of it. I also wanted to talk about the Lost Coast Outpost boycott. There are several folks in the community that, since they've released this information from um, the permit that the county collected about per uh, people who were applying for permits or had wanted to talk to a, uh, someone in the planning department or with a landowner, and sh per personal addresses were initially shared with the public uh, through this data release that they got through pu um, a Freedom of Information Act request or public rec records request. There was a lot of personal information for folks who were farmers, but a lot of folks who weren't farmers. There were consultants whose personal information got released. Um, anybody who wanted to have a certain kind of um, meeting to discuss these, had to uh, discuss these issues with the planning department, had to fill out a certain form that included your personal address. You could not put PO boxes. So yeah, a lot of information got released. People weren't happy about it, and now there's uh, uh, some people are boycotting the Lost Coast Outpost, um, and I, I. I think that's interesting. One major dispensary in Humboldt County has uh, pulled their advertising from Lost Coast Outpost, and several smaller businesses uh, have as well. I personally, uh, I haven't advertised any of my events or suggested to my clients that they advertise with Lost Coast Communications at all. Uh, since they did the crowdsourcing project, you know, about finding uh, cannabis grows on part randomly selected parcels. Um, it's not that they didn't have the right to do it. It's that it was a bad idea and they should have known better in, from my perspective. And because it was such a, it had such a, left a, such a bad taste in the community's mouth, I didn't see how we could support that kind of, um, site when we're trying to advertise to this community. You know, and maybe they read it, but I didn't want to advertise on something I didn't feel was supporting the community I'm advertising to. So, you know, bang for your buck, Kim Kemp, uh, redheaded black belt, um, that covers a lot of the same issues as Lost Coast Outpost. Used, uh, Kim Kemp used to be their primary writer for Southern Humboldt um, and many other things at Lost Coast Outpost, but now she focuses on KimKemp.com. That's K-Y-M, and I'll put the link down below. And voting with your ad dollars, I feel, is, is a, an effective practice, but I do have mixed feelings about it. As someone who really thinks that journalism serves a purpose when done well, um, and whether it's being done well in Humboldt County is a discussion for another day. It's not. But in terms of voting with your ad dollars, there are plenty of publications and websites and radio stations that will advertise cannabis businesses um, and treat you professionally without that connotation. And you know, we may not agree with you know, everything a publication does, and so you know, vote with your ad dollars carefully. But North Coast Journal has long been a um, friendly to uh, cannabis. Well, I say long, long in terms of like the new wave of uh, uh, cannabis businesses. By Coastal Media, their radio stations are uh, great to work with. Uh, the Trader is another great print publication. Uh, Eureka Radio, I haven't personally worked with them, but I believe they're open to, to working with different uh, cannabis-related businesses and advertisements. 
Emerald Magazine, of course, has taken on a new cannabis bent in the last uh, year or so. All Point Signs, I believe, does that e-billboard that uh, Bear River Casino owns. And I've advertised events on there. I really love having that billboard because it's, it's pretty cost effective. For, and you get a billboard, which is pretty cool. And they do, they're, they're open to certain kinds of cannabis ads. Um, I've never had them send one back. Uh, and we did the golden tarp, you know, lady pulling the tarps. Uh, <laughs> and then Savage Henry, they also accept advertising. I've, I also have mixed feelings about Savage Henry sometimes, but that's also a discussion for another day. The last thing I want to talk about today is having respect for people as they transition into this new regulated industry, or really the lack of respect and professionalism that has been apparent on the side of people helping this industry. There are attorneys and consultants and insurance agents and other folks who are working with this industry really well and helping you know, folks who haven't had to file paperwork and do all these other things um, to do them and do them well. But there are other folks who are you know, helping but not in a respectful way and then um, saying, perpetuating really this idea that we're be that humble farmers are backward country people that are uneducated and unsophisticated, which I have not found to be the case. I mean, there's, you know, of course there's folks who are uneducated, but, you know, with a, that shouldn't be a criteria for quality anyway. There's all sorts of ways to be educated that aren't school. So that aside, I wanted to talk about a couple instances published on social media or popularized on social media to you know illustrate the point that there's a need for addition for more discretion and professionalism from those working with the industry so the first person i'm going to bring up is a guy named lance rogers his uh he is an attorney and he operates a cannabis law office um, he, do, he seems to do good work uh, we had him as a speaker at um, an event that i uh, produced last year and, or maybe it was earlier this year, and he, you know, he did pretty well and seemed knowledgeable. So I don't have a personal uh, thing against the guy, but somebody sent me a link that he posted publicly on his Facebook page, his personal Facebook page, about how the funniest thing in his entire career has been talking to this Humboldt cannabis farmer slash rancher who thought that branding referred to his uh, cattle branding practice and not uh, branding of his logo and didn't understand how he could protect his branding. So, ha, 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 and then, you know, whatever. And then Hezekiah Allen, you know, why do you keep showing up today in my video, Hezekiah? Not trying here. Um, he, he responds, oh, every single emoticon, angry, happy, sad, wow. Uh, and Lance's response to that was, uh, it's fun to bring these hillbillies into the 21st century. Well, that's not very respectful or professional. And it's also not professional to talk about a client so specifically. I realize a name wasn't mentioned, but mentioned the county and then cannabis slash rancher. That's, that, that narrows it down. And that, specifically to people who aren't from Humboldt, that creates a picture. And that's why it's disrespectful. If you were going to talk about that, I've seen some you know people who create websites or people who do certain kinds of, you know, who, who curate their clientele. They sometimes complain, often private, like setting it to private on their Facebook page and never being specific enough to, you know, name a region or a, uh, not even usually a type of business. So it's very unprofessional and Lance, you should have known better. Whether it was mean or good spirited, I mean, it's, I, I, to me, it really isn't the point. Whether someone is uh, laughingly disrespectful or not, it's is what it is. Then there was Biotrack THC. During a local training, they had uh, a presenter who had a presentation. And on that presentation, the first slide or so, uh, Humboldt was spelled incorrectly. I think without the D. Uh, Humboldt folks have a lot of pride, and so that 
was not a good place to start off, and so they'd point out to the presenter, hey, you spelled Humboldt incorrectly, and he says, oh, I didn't think Humboldt people could read. Pause for laughter? No? Yeah, that wasn't found to be very funny. Uh, Lisa Finkler um, from THCA, a dispensary in Arcata, and her crew walked out of the training, and uh, posted, she posted on social media about the experience, and Biotrack uh, did reach out to her and they apologized. They, who, that present, presenter is now being assigned to a different location. And while it may seem minor, there's this, there are these bridges that are being built and these connections that are fresh and new and it's during a time of great stress and change. Um, not just for the industry, I mean the whole country. So as, you know, not having respect for the people who were bothering to come forward and bothering to try and come compliant. It's not, it's not an effective way to go about this. It's, it's not how we move forward together as a community. We need to build these bridges and they need to be strong. They can't be compromised by shitty behavior like this. And Biotrack THC is doing a lot, I feel, to, you know, contribute to the community and prove that they're not just you know, disrespectful jerks who want you to use their system or else. So I appreciate that. Um, and I just wanted to say that in terms of Biotrack THC, a, THC reached out to THCA and they had a discussion. I feel like there was some positive movement there. And I think the point we should take away from that is you can be mad when it's justified, but on the same token, you need to be able to accept a hand extended in friendship or apology. Because if you're just holding on to that, even though maybe not reparations, but progress has been made, you know, having, creating, keeping that animosity is not as productive as you think it is. And so, that's where I want to leave it today. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what I should talk about in a future video, because I seem to like doing these, and so I'll probably keep doing them. Uh, so thanks very much, and I'll see you soon.